So hello and welcome to You So You, my name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the craft bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. But today we're talking about weaving so grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. Welcome, welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm talking about weaving this week. Specifically, I'm talking about designing the next project to go on my loom. Um, this is my tapestry loom. Uh, Long-term viewers will recognise this unfinished project. Um, but I am now thinking ahead to what's going to come next when I get this one off the loom, which should be in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera around and show you how I'm going to go about designing a project to put on this particular loom. So I'm going to put this down and uh, let's get to it. Okay, so my loom is quite large. It's uh, 60 by 60. Um, so I've stuck together some sheets of printer paper, just A4 printer paper, to make the size of tapestry that I want. I've made sure that the height matches the height of my loom. Um, I've gone with the interior size of the loom, so I will need to, to tape this onto the loom itself when I'm good to go. And I've gone a little bit narrower than the, the width that my loom can take. That's because I really want a, a rectangular piece for this project. Um, but obviously if I wanted a square, I'd just make it so that it was as wide as well. Um, and obviously you don't need to use the full height. Um, I've just gone with that because I need to stick to affix it to the loom when I'm actually working with it. So we're going to create a pattern on this paper. So I've used glue to stick this together. Just uh, going to brush off the cat hairs because there has been a cat sat on the table. So yeah, I've glued it together so that I can draw on top of it. And I've also got a uh, pencil and some sharpies ready to mark out my pattern. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go with something fairly landscapey. And I am kind of making this up as I go. It's not based on anything in particular but of course you could do that and um, I'm going to start by just marking out a point at the bottom if I just move my paper up slightly uh, so my bottom is literally just out of shot here if I move up a little bit more so there's the bottom of my paper um, so I'm just going to mark a bit across the bottom because I'm going to do some plain weave at the bottom to, uh, to start off with. So I'm just going to roughly pencil in a mark there and uh, sketch out all what I'm thinking. And this, I realise this isn't going to show up very well with a pencil, so I will speed up this footage and come back to you when I'm going over it with the, the pens. Okay, so I've roughly sketched out my uh, my design in pencil. I'm just going to go over that with pen, um, just so that it's easier to see. I'm just going to mark the top and the bottom of where I want to be weaving in black. So I've done that at the bottom and at the top. As you can see, I'm not worrying too much about it being perfectly straight. You can, I'm just not. Um, okay, so I've gone landscapey. So I've got some hills at the bottom, and I'm going to do like a sunrisey, sunsetty sky at the top. Um, so I think I might actually get some more colours out. So let's get an orange, let's get a purple. Uh, sorry about the rattling of the sharpies, and we'll get a red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give some indication of what's going on in my, my design with the colours. These won't necessarily be the colours that I use to weave it with, um, it's just to give a general idea. So for my hills, I'm just going to mark them off in the 
this colour. They may end up being more sort of neutrally sandy hills than green hills, but it does let me know that that's what this bit is. So there's my hills. Um, so they'll be in different shades of whatever colour family I end up using for this bit. Um, and I'll choose my colours to give a sense of perspective so that the foreground is stronger than the background. Or that they get darker as they go back. I'll work that one out later when I pick up my yarns. Uh, for the sky, I am doing, as I say, a sunrisey, sunsetty thing. So I'm going to have a bit of blending going on here, but I'm just going to give myself some sort of sense of where those colours are going to need to, to be. So I've got my main sun thing happening in this area, but as I say, I am going to be doing some blending, so I'm just going to indicate that with this kind of effect. And I'm going to add into that some other blues because there will need to be some blues shaded in with these other colours. Uh, this is not any sort of formal, you've got to do it this way, way of doing it. I'm just going to think of what's going to help me out when I'm working from this particular uh, pattern. So I think having some sort of indication in colours that, that gives me an idea as I'm grabbing my yarns is going to be useful. Um, but I mean, I may well change things up as I'm working on the project. And just to make sure I'm totally clear, I'm going to put a few more of the red in here. And the orange. in here just so that it's really clear that I'm having to blend all of those colours together. To make it even clearer as I'm working from it, I'm going to make myself some little notes as I go through as well. So let's go note blending sunset. So that's clear for me there. And in these sections, I'll play around with textures a bit. Um, now I'll do some outlining. So I'm going to do a little note here. So outlined hills. And I'm also going to put a variety of textures on there as well. So I can do a mixture of plain weave and I can do a mixture of uh, playing around different colours in there and uh, maybe a few knotting techniques in there as well to give a bit of variety as we're, we're going up. In fact I am going to put uh, sumac on that one because I like sumac and I will probably put sumac there as well. So we'll do tabby on this one, we'll do tabby on that one, and for the other two, what should we do for those? We will do a bit of variety. Mm. We'll do some stripes on this one, oh that uh, Pins getting low. We'll do some stripes on that one. And maybe some tabby on that one. I just need to think about that because I'm not sure about whether I want to the same there. Okay, so that's my uh, design mapped out. So once I've got the design that's on the loom finished and taken off the loom, I'll uh, come back in another video and show you how I'm going to work from this to turn it into a tapestry weaving 
and sit there. So that's my, my design. This is going to be a little series of videos working on this particular project. Um, so yeah, come along and weave with me. So I hope you found that useful and interesting. If you've enjoyed spending time with my company, give me a like down below and let me know in the comments what you're working on at the moment. Have you designed your own tapestry weaving? Is it something you'd like to give a go? Now I aim to put a video out every weekend. Once a month it's a roundup of what I've been working on the previous month, which is what's coming out next week. And other times it's more project or technique focused videos like this one. And there'll be a couple of videos coming up somewhere on the screen that you might like to watch between now and then. And I look forward to seeing you next weekend. And you know what to do to make sure that happens. It's all down there. So until then, happy crafting and bye-bye for now.